Joining me right now is Joel Brandmeier. He's the president and CEO of Alliance for the Great Lakes. Joel, thanks so much for joining us here on Great Lakes Now. Absolutely, glad to be here. So Great Lakes Week in Cleveland this year. Last year it was Detroit, now we're in Cleveland. A great backdrop, we've got Lake Erie right here. Absolutely. Well, Detroit's actually my hometown, so I am partial to Michigan mm -hmm. still. But um, right here in Cleveland, we're at the heart of a lot of the things that are happening in the Great Lakes right now. People, of course, are very aware of some of the pollution facing Lake Erie. We're seeing the threat of Asian carp turning up in Lake Erie. And so it's the right time of year to be here in Cleveland. Yeah, it is amazing timing. So talk to me a little bit about the Alliance for the Great Lakes, what you guys do. Absolutely. Well, the Alliance uh, is a regional environmental organization. We advocate on behalf of the Great Lakes to make sure that they're protected and restored for future generations. Um, we have staff in six cities around the region, and we make it a point to make sure people have a chance to get involved in protecting and restoring the Great Lakes. At the heart of the work that we do are the people on the ground who think and work in the Great Lakes region every day. So there seems to be a lot of groups that we're going to be hearing from uh, during Great Lakes Week who also have that same goal in mind. What sets your organization apart? Absolutely. Well, you know, certainly one of the things that we get accused of in the Great Lakes region is having too many programs. Um, one thing that we do that's unique is we make sure that people get involved in the work that we do. So whether that's going out to clean up a beach, whether that's planting a habitat along the shoreline, um, doing something like walking the halls of Congress and advocating on behalf of the lakes, uh, we do it all. And so we make it a point to make sure that people have a chance to get invested in protecting this part of the country. Because frankly, um, we've got a phenomenal resource here and it's up to all of us to make sure it's here for generations to come. And amazing, and we talk about a lot of the, the policy that goes along with this and a lot of the science, and sometimes people can watch this at home and say, I, I'm not quite sure I can totally connect to this. I know I love the water, I know I love to spend time there, but what really can I do? It's very important to try to empower people to say, look, there, there are some things you can do, and if you just want to take a couple yeah. of hours to help us clean up a beach, come along for the ride. Yeah, one thing to remember is that every time you turn on your tap, you're drinking Great Lakes water. Whether you live on the coast or whether you're inland, the water you're drinking is being affected by what's happening here in Great Lakes Week here in Cleveland. Um, and so everybody in this region is in some way connected at the basic level to the Great Lakes. Our challenge is to make sure that water stays pure and clear and clean and available for everybody in the region. So we're talking about 30 plus million people who are affected, eight states, two provinces of Canada, and the scope of that is amazing. How difficult is it then to try to coordinate efforts all around the Great Lakes Basin to make sure that we have the water, water quality that we want? Well, it can be a challenge. One of the things we're seeing right now is the emergence of an issue that we thought we had licked. Here in Lake Erie, you've got uh, nutrient pollution running into the lake and causing these massive algae blooms. And so you end up with these thick mats of smelly green algae covering the lakes. And in some cases, they can even be toxic to pets and, and, and people. Um, that's a problem we thought we had done in the 1970s. And so we're facing a complex set of inputs of pollution that are causing this problem and it requires all of us to get on our game and figure out how to solve it quickly, efficiently, um, and in the most cost-effective way possible. So people who have seen this possibly in, in Lake Erie, I know last year the problem was very bad. It wasn't as, as bad this time around this summer, but what actually causes that? Well, one of the uh, sort of side benefits, if you will, of having a major drought this year was the fact that we didn't get as much runoff going into the lakes as we do. Water hits the ground and has to go somewhere. It either goes into a sewer system or it goes directly into a river or stream or lake, and that's called non-point runoff. That water carries with it all sorts of different kinds of pollutants, and one of, those, one of the pollutants it carries is phosphorus. And so that runoff from the surface of like farm fields is actually contributing to the problem in western Lake Erie that we see. And that nutri those nutrients help support those algae blooms that create those thick, smelly mats of algae. So how do you back up and do you go then to the farms or how do you stop that from happening? Well, it's a real mix of sources. So it, farms are part of the problem. So are cities that discharge uh, combined sewage into the lakes. Um, so are places that uh, discharge stormwater of various kinds into the lakes. There's no one silver bullet for this problem, which is one of the things that makes it so complicated to solve. Uh, we've got to focus on investing dollars in the places that are going to have the most impact on solving the problem. And that's going to be a combination of farmland and urban areas. So when you say investing dollars, where do those dollars come from? Uh, part of them come from the federal government um, through programs like the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. But you've also got to have that local commitment. You've got to have cities being willing to build smart water systems that actually keep pollution out of the water. You've got to have farmers willing to invest uh, time and money in 
farming sustainably so that pollution doesn't get into the rivers in the first place. How hard has that been to try to get that education process to farmers or to try to get local municipalities to care about that and because times have been so tough, mm -hmm. take that carving of money and put it aside and, and to put it forward to those kind of programs? Well, it, it can be a real challenge. Uh, we had a tough time this summer uh, trying to pass a bill to support farmers. Um, we've seen proposals for hundreds of millions of dollars of cuts to federal programs that support uh, building sewage infrastructure. And at a time when the Great Lakes are obviously still facing critical pollution problems, it's the wrong time to be thinking about making those major cuts. Now, funding is part of the problem. We also have to know what target we're aiming for. Um, right now, nobody has really decided how can we define Lake Erie being healthy again? We've got to have a target so we can say when we reach this level of phosphorus in the water, we know we're not going to have to deal with this problem anymore. Whose job is that? to have that that's benchmark? A, that's a great question. Uh, in fact, all the Great Lakes states should have standards in place to set targets for the control of phosphorus. Um, the state of Wisconsin, in fact, has embarked recently on an innov innovative program, and they're jumping out ahead of the rest of the region. They've set up targets for phosphorus, and they're developing partnerships of cities and rural farmers to come together and figure out how to reach those targets. And that's a process I think that's going to be coming for all the Great Lakes states. It's still amazing though, because when we talk about this is a collective effort in mm -hmm. the entire basin, but Wisconsin's got their own thing. Ohio has their own thing. Michigan has their own thing. Uh, is it up to the Great Lakes Commission or, or other organizations to make sure that every state is on the same page? Because when you're sharing shoreline, like right. Erie, you've got a couple different states you're talking about in right. Canada. And, and there is some good news there too. We don't want to overlook that Michigan and Ohio and Ontario are all talking to each other along with US EPA uh, and other federal agencies. And so there are efforts going on to coordinate all those kinds of actions. Um, but in the end, the states do have the authority and they will have to step up and make some tough decisions about how to control this pollution. Okay, Joel, what do you expect to hear uh, this week and, and what are you hoping to take out of Great Lakes Week? Well, I'm very excited about this week. We've got uh, Wednesday morning, a, a great round of sessions on things like Asian carp, nutrients, uh, and some of the federal responsibilities for the Great Lakes. Um, Thursday, we're going to hear from uh, uh, delegates from the presidential campaigns about their commitments to the Great Lakes. Um, and so I think we're going to come out of this uh, week with uh, a lot of great plans for taking next steps. Um, of course, uh, we, as we just found last week with the signing of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, um, the proof is really in the implementation. So today, mm -hmm. here, the, or here at Great Lakes Week, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about what ought to happen when we leave here and going into 2013. We want to see some action. Exactly. And we've got to stay focused on that. Um, we're going through a, a very interesting interesting time at the political level right now. Um, we can't let that uh, defer our focus from the fact that the Great Lakes still need a lot of work. And so we're going to come into next year ready to do that work. And Joel, uh, if you'd like to give a plug for people who want to get involved in helping to restore the Great Lakes and, and to help out, where should they go to find out more information? Absolutely. Well, our website is www.greatlakes.org. And if you want to get involved very soon, uh, this Saturday, in fact, uh, the Alliance for the Great Lakes is coordinating uh, hundreds of beach cleanups around the Great Lakes region. And you can find out about those at greatlakesadopt.org. All right. So find out and maybe go help out and clean up a beach. Joel Bremer, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. So